Our region's business is sponsored by PNC for the achiever in you. Our region's business, improving our economy, creating jobs, and strengthening communities. Innovation, collaboration, transformation, and the people making it happen. Join us as we take a closer look at our region's business. Now, here's your host, Bill Flanagan. Today on our region's business, the reason a commercial real estate company from Chicago keeps buying up buildings in our region, plus the ascendance of a sender and what it could mean to entrepreneurs with big ideas beyond technology. But first, perfect for Sunday morning, the expanding real estate portfolio of the Priory Hospitality Group. The company got its start on Pittsburgh's north side when it turned an old church, and yes, a priory, into a hotel and reception hall. Now it's expanding up the Allegheny River and all the way to Wilmerding with new hotel developments. John Graff is back with us. He's president and CEO of the Priory Hospitality Group. Welcome back. Good to see you. Oh, delighted to be here. Yeah, so I was over on the north side a, a week or so ago and then noticed uh, there's land being cleared. There's a whole construction going on the way. Just a couple of blocks from where your current your current hotel is. What's going on over there toward the, toward the Heinz plant? Right, so uh, I'm involved with some partners in a hotel development there. We're going to build a six-story hotel right on East Ohio Street, right where it uh, blends into Route 28. And it's going to be a, a Comfort Inn and Suites, six stories, and it's a kind of a new product for Comfort Inn and Suites. So the idea is to really create a very urban hotel. Usually, it's a type of roadside type hotel or suburban. This is going to be one of their first urban hotels, so it's going to be pretty neat. Okay. And then uh, we're redeveloping what people I think recently know as uh, the Ark House Alcohol Rehabilitation Center. Right uh, there on East Ohio Street, it's on the main drag, right. and the, uh, the old Route 28 kind of. Yep, and right, right, uh, right by the interchange with 279. And so, uh, again, uh, myself and some partners are redeveloping that into an event space and into a uh, rooftop restaurant brew pub. And uh, that's a great historic building. It was built in 1902. Uh, it was a bank for many, many years, and then it, it became sort of this uh, uh, halfway house type facility. It's been empty now for about 10 years, so. Well, that's great. So you have a limited service hotel right mm -hmm. next door, a restaurant and brew pub. So the hotel gets the benefit of having that kind of amenity for its guests, and you get a new property on the north side. Right. And the other po positive, too, is that we're able to leverage the uh, business that we would have in the event space with the guest rooms that mm. are right there as well. Can begin to package all that together. Precisely. You mentioned the rooftop uh, the, the facilities on both buildings. It's a really interesting view back into town from up there. It's, it's a great view. It's one that people don't see too often. You really would have to go way up to the top of Spring Hill to get the same angle. So there it is, it's right there in town. It's, the buildings are high enough that you can just look right over 279 and you see the convention center and that end of town and then you can look down to Lawrenceville too. Well, it sounds like an exciting project. I gotta ask you though, there's been so many hotels built here in the last 10 years or so and so many rooms added. Doesn't give you any trepidation at all about taking a risk like this? Well, it's funny, we went and uh, when we first did this project had commissioned uh, research uh, from uh, PKF Hospitality, which is a big national outfit. And uh, they came in and they said it looks good. Well, then the market did change. And so we recommissioned it because yeah. banks were looking for, you know, they want some comfort. And what they're forecasting is a steady growth that supply is going to outstrip that growth for a while, but that it's going to catch up. So uh, I think right now we're in, in kind of the, the phase where the market's getting used to all this new product. But I think by the time we open, which we hope to be in about May or June next year, that that will settle down. Well, that's encouraging. Obviously, a big surge was related to a lot of the energy exploration mm -hmm. here and that big push in our economy. All that softened a bit, but, but encouraging to hear that there's some sense that there's some underlying stability in this market despite what's been happening in energy. Right, yeah, and it's, it's uh, other sectors, banking, the eds, the meds uh, are bringing people into town. And frankly, we've become kind of a tourist destination. Mm -hmm. We're getting great, great press, as you well know, uh, all around the world. So uh, I think that that's helping us too. Okay, so that's in the core and a lot of excitement and vitality going on in the city of Pittsburgh right now with these kinds of developments. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Wilmerding and right. the Westinghouse Castle. So your, your dream is to have a hotel out there as well? Right, so the, yeah, the castle was the original office building for Westinghouse Airbrake. And it's right there in Wilmerding, which if people don't know is by Monroeville. That was George Westinghouse's first company in 1869 and he wound up out in Wilmerding. Right. And so his office is still there and everything, but the place really it looks literally like a castle. So many 
took it out of the middle of France <laughs> and plopped it in the middle of Wilmerding. Well, it's been empty for about four years, and I was able to acquire it at share sale last year. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is to go and redevelop this property into a, a boutique hotel, about 40 guest rooms, and also event space. and. Uh, give it kind of a resort type feel is what hmm. we're looking to do. So, and, and Wilmerding, for folks who haven't been out there, and you go out through the Westinghouse Valley on the Triborough Expressway, it does have a little bit of a European kind mm -hmm. of a feel, the little village kind of nestled in, the, in amongst the hills with this castle, right? Right in the heart of town, right? Yeah, exactly, and um, if you go up into the upper floors of the castle, you can look down into the valley, and, and the air brake factory is still there. It's Wabtec now, but the, the factory still have there. a manufacturing operation. Yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, so you look down there and you see the houses and everything, and it kind of reminds me of those uh, 19th century paintings that people do that sort of celebrated industry, right? Mm -hmm. It was in the industrial age. So that's kind of what it reminds me of. Real, real interesting views down into that. A bit more of a stretch when it comes to getting the financing for a project like that? It's, it's going to take a while to convince people, but I think we, we have a really good idea, a really good product. And truthfully, you know, if I've learned one thing. Uh, from our business, the Priory and the Grand Hall, which is on the north side, uh, it is that if you have something that's unique and you execute it well, people will come to you. Mm -hmm. And so, Wilmerday may seem a little remote to people. It's actually very close to the heart of Monroeville. Once we get people educated on that and they see what that product is, uh, they're going to want to come. Yeah. Well, and I think about the Priory. You guys were a, something of a pioneer on the north side, too, back before everything that's happened on the north side happened, the pri you opened the Priory. Yeah, that's true. And I, unfortunately, I can't take too much credit for that, but that was my mom and dad, Ed and Mary Ann, had uh, took that leap of faith. But, you know, you learn at the feet of uh, people that have done it before. In my case, they were quite quite close to me. Yeah, I, only a little less than a minute left, but I gotta ask you about the other new property you took over the mansions on 5th, right on 5th Avenue, yep. big old mansion turned into a hotel last fall. How's that been going out of the it's gate? It's been going great. It's been going great. We've been making some tweaks there and uh, trying to you know, get the product exactly the way we want, uh, we want it. And uh, the market's been reacting really well. Uh, people really like it, the product. Uh, I think our staff is really engaged. Uh, so I've been very pleased with it. Okay, right in the heart, shady side, Squirrel Hill. They have a little more highbrow it's, East End than you guys are maybe used to. It's a nice neighborhood, and there's a lot of great restaurants. So uh, okay. yeah, I make a lot of lunch dates uh, up in Shady. Side. Another good destination hotel. John Graff from the Priory Hospitality Group. Continued success. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, appreciate it. Next up, from the Windy City to the Steel City, the reason the smart money in commercial real estate is finding its way to our region. Stay with us.